Uh, Diddy. They're saying Diddy threatened to kill somebody. They said uh, Diddy threatened to kill Vibe editor over a magazine cover. They said Diddy has entered rarefied air. The accused mogul has been accused of so many horrific crimes. Da, da, da. Let me see. Where did this where did this accusation come out? I'm trying to figure out where the accusation come out. So Diddy Vibe Editor. Let me see. I'm trying to read a little bit more about this allegations here. Let me see. Let's check this out, chat. Why does my audio not work sometimes? Is my ad blocker? Hell of a thing. Former editor of Vibe magazine says Diddy issued a death threat, put it up full of mass, over a cover with millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable. We just need 1% of the viewers to become. Okay, this nigga over here promoting some bullshit. All right. Uh, I, I'll just go off Diddy. Okay, so the Huffington Post is saying Combs allegedly threatened the former Vibe uh, editor-in-chief, Danielle Smith, in 1997 after she declined to show him an upcoming magazine depicting him as an angel. The editor of a music magazine on Friday became the latest woman to accuse him battled rapper of violent behavior, claiming he threatened to see her dead in the trunk of a car over a 1997 editorial dispute. Combs is currently facing multiple lawsuits, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Uh, Combs and I worked a lot together. The then editor in chief of our magazine wrote in New York Times. Okay, so it's a New York Times article. So let's just go to the New York Times article to see if we could get the source. Damn, look at this motherfucking thing right here. What the fuck? You got to subscribe for this shit? Man, we're not subscribing for shit. Damn, look how they got Diddy painted like he's a fucking menace. All right, whatever. Smith recalled Wanton Combs on the cover of Vibe's 1997 December and January 1998 issue with, um, in white feathered rings, wings. The photo shoot in September went swimmingly, but the aftermath proved disturbing. Combs wanted to see the Vibe cover before they went to press, Smith wrote on Friday. It wasn't our policy to show covers before publication, so after I told him no, we heard that he planned to come to her office and force us to show him. Smith recalls staffers hashing out a plan to keep her safe from Combs. By then, rap mogul had been found guilty in 1996 of threatening a New York Post reporter with a gun. And was also busy denying that he had something to do with the 1996 uh, killing of Tupac Shakur. Smith recalled grabbing a stack of covers, proving the, uh, proofs, cover proofs depicting Combs when he arrived at the Vibe office and rushing them to her mansion editor before jumping into a cab to flee. He resumed his efforts the very next day. She said she politely refused to show him the cover when he demanded seeing it. It was then that Combs told me, as I've retold hundreds of times over the years, that he would see me dead in the trunk of a car. Not missing a beat, I told him he needed to take that threat back. Take it back, I said, as if I were 10. Take what back? Shit, I could imagine Diddy saying, nigga, you better take that, take that on that threat. So, uh, that would have vile laugh. Fuck you. Smith continued, take it now, take it back now, I said, or I'm calling my lawyer and you're going to jail. He said, I know where you are right now, right on Lexington Avenue. Combs refused the comments of the New York Times, HuffPost reached out. Smith recalled that while he faxed over an apology within hours, the magazine's computers servers went missing a few days later. Fortunately, a, staff, a staffer saved an early version of their upcoming issue on a personal disc and the cover went to print. He's not been accused of blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. You know, is this him and her? Oh, shit. This is, I guess they must have had a cordial relationship. Uh, I'm not going to say this is not an indictment of everything. You know, when you put it in context of what you've heard about Sean P. Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Brother Love, 
I'm not going to say this is not further proof for an indictment that maybe he was a very violent or threatening or just nasty person. I also do want to inquire, and this is me asking. And by the way, I want to send, you know, if, if she did go through being threatened and felt the fear of fear for her life, I want to send, send some love and blessings to her. I do have a question, though, because I know when I came into music, the music business, and even when I started covering music shit, and I guess that's, that's after the magazine era. That's kind of even after the websites era or the websites era were phasing out, the blogger, whatever the case is. It was still commonplace for rappers to believe that the way to control the media was to threaten the media. So I'm not excusing Diddy's actions at all, but I don't think Diddy was the only person who did this. And again, obviously, this isn't something with like sexual assault or abuse or nothing like that. Um, it just goes to show this guy was a controlling, uh, maniacal, like maybe POS piece of shit um, that was threatening people to have favorable reviews or for him to be able to control them in whatever aspect of jobs he did. I, this is what I say. When I see people start speaking out, let's not only speak about Diddy. Because I am really skeptical that Diddy was the only monster. And when everybody keeps coming out and be like, oh, I got a Diddy story too. I want to hear all the stories. I want to hear the stories about the people who haven't been named yet. Because right now it is convenient to be like, well, Diddy, he, Diddy told me he's going to blow my car. He told me he's going to get somebody to beat me up. I think that, you know, what the music industry won't say, they're acting. And, and I, keep, I told you this before. They're acting like Diddy's a one of one. And I particularly don't believe, number one, first of all, I'm not saying he probably wasn't one of the worst, but I think that was probably more reflective of most of those people within that era. So while you share a story about Diddy, what about the other executives? What about the other times people threatened you? Share those stories too, because what I'm seeing is that everybody realizes, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to shut the book on that era by tying the noose to Diddy's neck and hanging Diddy while everybody lay low and go free. And my thing is, we're not trying to spare Diddy, but if you're going to speak truth to power in these times, where now we're far removed from it, but people do care about it, you shouldn't only speak about Diddy. What about them other niggas? What did Jay-Z do to y'all niggas? Did Jay-Z kick y'all door down? Did he send Memphis Bleak up there to rob y'all? Like, we want to know the truth. We want to know the truth about everybody. I just don't believe that this behavior was only Diddy. And that's the only thing I kind of look at it because I'm like, this feels like what this music industry is. When you see a R. Kelly and people will throw his name under the bus and be like, yo, yeah, he's horrible. And by the way, I'm not saying he's not. But they're like, he's the only one that liked kids. He liked underage girls. But when you really study rap history, that don't seem to be the truth. It seems like there's a lot of other men that used to date underage women and sometimes even married. And these stories are very public. And the people that were dating underage were famous or ended up being famous, but they don't get called out. So what I believe is happening here with Diddy is that for all the wrongs of that era of Diddy, that other maybe executives, moguls, or whoever else indulged threatening behavior, intimidation tactics, beating up journalisms, like... I remember saying this about Troy Ave when he first came out and definitely about Meek Mill. They still think that it's the old era where you could threaten the media and beat them up for them to get down with your program. Don't you see how Meek Mill talks to me like, no, we could beat up Ack and get him out of here. That's why he's done. We're not in that era anymore, right? But there was a time. Like, if you watch Straight out of Compton, I know it's an over-exaggeration, but it's, it's loosely based in truth where... Niggas is going up in their record label office and fucking with baseball bats and they swinging and breaking shit and intimidating the people, hopefully to get out of a deal or to get this or get that. That was definitely intimidation and threats were all peppered 
through the music industry if we're to go off the stories we hear now I, I, maybe you can make the argument to be like well we're not talking about other people right now we're talking about diddy my thing is that if 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 this is something that the New York Times cares about, we should expose everybody who was making these threats. And from what I'm hearing, all of the let me not say it, half, all of the executives were behaving in this manner in terms of strong-handed approach and acting like street niggas to journalists and label people to get their intended result. So I'm still waiting to hear the people who are going to tell me the story about how Jay-Z was running around and how Irv Gotti was running around and even Dame Dash, even though he looked like he's been telling his story a long time. I want to hear about everybody because, the, you know, I see everybody trying to rush to quickly. And I, and I guess jail is going to be the, the thing that people are going to feel like, <sighs> OK, this era is now we, we, we've 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 right the wrongs of this era. I just find it hard to believe that Diddy was the only, like, I'm not saying he might have not been the worst, but I find it hard to believe that some of these allegations, Diddy was the only nigga on. I find it really hard to believe. I find it very hard to believe that he was the only people threatening journalists, saying they're going to kill him, doing freak offs. I find it very hard to believe, but you know, I'll digress. Anyway, um, so if, if you guys didn't hear the news as well, so Diddy's mother was actually hospitalized, right? And um, his 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 mom, his mom was hospitalized, and apparently, let me see, this is apparently, apparently they think that stress is a factor. Let me see if is this a morning. Oh, give me a second. What the fuck? Okay, no, no, okay, that's old. Anyway, so Diddy's mom, her name is Janice Combs. She's actually 84. Now, you got to imagine 84, you're up there in age. She was actually admitted to a hospital after having chest pains re uh, recently. And a source familiar that was close with the situation, you know, th they're, they're kind of thinking that it might be stress-related. Now, it says uh, Diddy was with his mom at the hospital and that she was still at the hospital and she wasn't discharged yet. And they're keeping her for observation. You gotta remember her mom his mom is, is 84, right? And 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 trust and believe, trust me, like trust me. And I know like, you know, nobody worries about someone more than their mama. Like it, it, it again, your mother and, and usually as a son, you rather your mom not know some of the trials and tribulations you get through because their stress level, which probably primarily is caused by a source of helpful helplessness. Because she loves her son. She don't think, I don't think she thinks her son is a monster. But could she do anything to help him? No. Right? So she's kind of just watching this snowball effect happen and happen and happen. And, you know, she, you know, she's probably stressed because she's worried of him. Right? They, they always say, like, they say stress is like a big killer in, um, um, big killer in, in, in minority uh, groups um, for whatever reason. It could be stress over finances. It could be stress over whatever. You know what I mean? Anyway, it says, uh, she, according to the source, she was admitted on July 10th, which is uh, three days ago, after having chest pains. Mm. They have run a number of tests, but the diagnosis is still unknown. The source say they think stress is a factor. Uh, it says Janice Combs is in okay health, the source notes, but had brain surgery this year. Oh, my God. His mom had brain surgery? I wish her, I wish her uh, uh, good health. Uh, the stress of everything has been a lot for her. I think she largely, like you know, been standing by her son. The news of J Janice Combs' hospitalization, hospitalization comes amid Sean Combs' legal troubles. Earlier this month, they reported that uh, the rapper, or really Diddy, is the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation in the Southern District of New York. Uh, sources tell NBC News on July 3rd that even though there's no impending charge against the artist, um, additionally, the businessman homes in L.A. and Miami were raided. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, man, send your prayers up for his mom. Despite what happens to Diddy, I guarantee you, and I know this might be an unpopular thing 
to say because right now we're probably all seeing Diddy as a monster, as someone very evil, maniacal, someone who probably lacks empathy and lacks a heart. Um, I, I think it's a reasonable assumption that I would believe he does have a heart for his mom. He cares about his mom, and, and I, I think he would he would forever have some guilt if she, you know, I don't speak anything to existence, but if she, you know what I mean, um, you know, fell ill and, and the actual reason was because of the stress she's enduring to his situation. So it's one of those type of things. You get what I'm saying? Um, I seen Law and Crimes cover recently. Let's see. Law and Crimes. They were, they were covering basically supposedly some rumors that any day now, Diddy, could be now indicted and pretty much you know it might be at the final stages at this point where people are kind of ready let me see is it this oh, and by the way, i'll talk about the young thug trial I'm, i feel like we're doing law and order today i'm sorry y'all here we go and a reported federal investigation, embroiled music hitmaker Sean Diddy Combs seemingly has no care in the world. But his recent summer activities have peeved his accusers, as their lawyers are slamming Combs as they send an ominous message, more could lie ahead for the rapper and producer. It feels to me like he's trying to portray um, this feeling of nonchalance because he doesn't want people to think that he's nervous. Um, perhaps he thinks it's going to make him look better, make him look innocent uh, if he doesn't appear to be concerned. But to those people who don't believe him anyway, that just comes across as uncaring and arrogant. Since swimming in the ongoing lawsuits and with his public reputation taking a huge blow since, recent photos of the mogul show him white water rafting in Wyoming, showing off his private jet, as well as biking around South Beach, Florida. And the move. Can I ask you a question, chat? What do you think the demeanor of Diddy should be like? Again, I do think because of the video we've seen and the allegations we've heard, people kind of do want, you know, when people think you've done bad, they want you to go die. Like, they, they want you to see you incredibly sad. They want you to go die. They don't want you to see you smiling. They don't want you to see you having fun. They want to see you stressed out, losing hair, getting gray, um, looking weak, and, and they want you to die, right? Uh, do, do you think that, you know... Uh, Again, I, I'm making assumptions here, so please don't think this is what I think. But I'm just, I, I would imagine that Diddy probably believes he didn't do anything wrong. Like, yeah, he probably did beat a couple bitches up. And sorry for the word bitches in this context. But he probably did put hands on a few people. But I don't think Diddy think that he was committing either sexual assault or, or, or that his freak offs were wrong. Like, I think Diddy think that, oh, you know what? These people, they down bad. They coming at me. They, they got broke. And they, they filed a bunch of lawsuits and now the government think that they about to get me locked up because these money hungry motherfuckers done made up a bunch of allegations against me. Right. That's what I think his demeanor is. There's no way he's been he's thinking like, oh, nah, they got me for real now. Like, shit, I knew I should have stopped doing A, B and C because I knew I was doing a crime. I, I would be shocked if that's what if he was thinking like that. That's crazy. Right. So in his opinion, I. If he's thinking he ain't really do nothing wrong, are you expecting Diddy to look mad sad all the time? Or are you expecting to see him like this on a bike riding, throwing up the peace sign, brother love all day? You know what I mean? Like white water rafting, which, by the way, that was a thing that people got mad at. Dude, what is he supposed to do? You tell me. Should he just stay inside? You know, by the way, there's also no reason for, for him to ever be seen. Right. Like, bro, play this. How come, I, we don't even know where Jay-Z be at, but we never see Jay-Z unless he wants to be seen. How come we always seen, we see, we seen this nigga? Now, granted, we know where his house is and it's like a public place, but like he has a big enough property and enough privacy. He could be out on his property without being by the pier where they're photoing him a lot. He's riding on the bridge where there's going to be cars or whatever photo him a lot. Um, it all goes to his demeanor. Clearly, Cassie, and we'll get into that, Cassie's team are upset that he looks happy. They want him to not look happy, right? Or they want him to go away or stop being seen. Do you think that Diddy should either keep living his life at least until... And also, here's the thing, too, that I was thinking about, like, real talk. Diddy has probably had to come to terms that he's probably going to get indicted. And 
that has to be a fucked up feeling because you do know the whole weight of the United States government. Their their U.S. attorneys are coming at you, and they're going to try to put you in, in jail. They're going to try to put you in jail without a bond first, and they're trying to put you away for life on some R. Kelly shit. Let me ask you a question. If you knew possibly you were going to go to jail or you're going to get indicted, right? Do you just go and stress and just be locked in a room until it happens? Or do you say, fuck it, let me turn up the most now because I might have to sit for two, three years while a case or a trial happens. Do you get what I'm saying? What do you think the strategy for Diddy should be? Lissine says, act. You got to know when to get low. Do you think do you think Diddy should get low or do you think he should just turn up right now? Because everybody's predicting he's going to get indicted. And the only thing people haven't really predicted yet, which I actually predict he won't get he won't be incarcerated with no bond. So he won't get he won't be locked up during the whole time that he's waiting for trial. So he I think he'll be put on house arrest and he'll just be going back and forth to court. Which obviously that's just a better look. I, I can't imagine Diddy in a jail cell like thug. Like I'm just sorry, I just can't. So, but there's a possibility he could be, right? Because you know, you know, the government's gonna come with this angle to whenever the indictment comes out. Well, he's been threatening witnesses. He's bl he blew up Kid Cudi's car. If he's at home, and we can't monitor him like how we we need to monitor him, he might go kill Cassie. He might go kill this person. He might send his henchmen to do this. He's a billionaire. He has all the resources to do whatever, right? They're gonna try to put a good a good argument that he doesn't get bond. Again, I'm 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 asking y'all to think like Diddy. You might have to go sit down for a year or two, or let's say two years. Until that day comes, do you turn the fuck up? More freak offs, legal ones this time, right? More white ra white water rafting. You having jet part or no um yacht parties and all that, or do you just get out the way and start planning? Huh? Yo, why y'all trolling me too? Stop it, man. <laughs> Yo, 